This video is sponsored by Ritual. More on them later. It's the excited dance. <laughs> DIY friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danny, and today's DIY in progress is going to be another episode of Homemade Home, a series where I take you on my journey to make over my 150 year old plus home into a home that I love. And I'm excited because we are going to be making some physical changes, doing a little surgery on this wonderful farmhouse of mine. I've been following a lot of creators online who have been kind of creating these like cool inset shelves that I'm just like here for it. I'm like, that is so cool. I want to do it. I have a home. I have the DIY skills and I love the inspiration. I see this as an absolute win. I'm in the kitchen because this is going to happen in my kitchen. So we're going to be cutting a hole in my wall. We're going to be creating a shelf that's kind of like sits in. I'm back. But if you are new here, welcome. Join this wonderful Creative Beast community. We're doing lots of fun DIY stuff in this house this summer and you do not want to miss out. So with that said, let's get into this episode. Editor, roll the tape. Boop. So we have pivoted the camera just a little bit. We are still in my kitchen, as you can see, and this is the wall of attack. This is where I would like to put my inset wall display. I think that this is a really great wall to have some kind of shelf display like this because previously, if you guys remember, this is actually where I displayed my copper spoon kind of contemporary art piece. But there was one small error in that art piece that I did not think about, and that was the fact that I have a dog and one of his strongest Pokemon attacks is his tail whip. Who's that Pokemon? He went into a battle with my spoon art and the spoon art lost. Big time. <laughs> So the bottom rack was uh, always constantly falling off. So I decided to change it up in my home and come up with a new plan because I do really think that this is a great area for display. We just needed to rethink it and having it inset, I think is going to be a great way to be able to have things on display, but also dog friendly and safe and just be cool to do. So I am excited about this DIY. I've never done something like this. So let's see what happens. First things first, I really wanna brainstorm this and figure out what I want this to look like. So I'm going to take a picture of this wall and then we're gonna sketch out a couple examples of where we can go with this, which direction we wanna take, and then we'll start opening up this wall. Ooh, I'm nervous. Let's get designing. I did a couple sketches and ideas around what I wanted to do and I think I came to a conclusion. So I was playing with different ideas where the top would be arched, the top would be square, wood shelves or no wood shelves. Maybe we would add a gallery rail on them so that things could be protected from the dogs. A lot of the inspiration for this came from Style It Pretty Home. Her name is Zenya. If you don't follow her on Instagram, please do go follow her. She did a very similar kind of arched piece in her bathroom and it was just beautiful. I was like, I must have this in my home. But what I really loved about this was one was the arch. Um, but the second thing was the gallery rail posts that she used. What a dream. So I think I'm going to go with this look here. It kind of has the arch top. I think I'm only going to do three shelves and then the bottom shelf is just going to be drywall. And then I think I really like the idea of just doing the drywall back. I really want it to feel crisp and clean and let the decor be the thing that draws your eye in. But then having the wood shelves and then the brass gallery rail posts as a way to kind of keep everything secure and on those shelves. So yeah, should we do it? And I'm really excited to kind of get started on this. I think it's going to be a great project. So I think at this point, we just need to do some due diligence. Let's go figure out where our studs are, where are the pipes, where are their cords, then we can kind of move forward from there. So let's do it. Gonna go DIY, gonna go DIY. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, 
Okay, so now that I have a hole in my wall, I'm gonna use something called a boroscope. There's a little screen right here, and what it has is a light and a camera on the tips. Look, you guys can see yourself. It's kinda cool, it's like a little mini camera, so we're gonna use this to kinda scope around and see what's inside. So as I imagined, there's our stud. There's our other stud. What's going this down? Nothing. I don't know why I'm like turning with this. <laughs> okay, it seems to be pretty clear. Let's go up. I mean, it seems pretty clear all the way up between the studs. Now, I wanna see if I can kind of puncture through so that I can get to the other side because I wanna know if there's anything on the other side of all of this insulation or not. Honestly, I think we're in the clear. Oh my gosh, every time I look in the screen, I like turn the camera and I'm just waiting to see a face or like eyes or something and I'm like, do not do this to me, house. <laughs> Guys, I think we're good. I'm gonna just start measuring this entire wall out properly, mark all the cut lines, and then we'll get this drywall cut. All right, let's go. DOA friends, before we get started with our arch build, I wanna take a quick minute to thank the sponsor of today's episode, Ritual. As a person who is literally always on the go. My health is super important to me. If I'm not healthy and taking care of my body, I can't continue to create fun DIY content each and every week. I mean, who would you drink a coffee with on your weekend mornings? I know, I don't even want to think about it either. And that's why I'm excited to chat with you about Ritual. Ritual is a company that was built for health skeptics by skeptics. They weren't about pseudoscience and half-baked truths. Like, me, they roll their eyes at health fads, which is why I kind of related to them. So in a pursuit to reimagine kind of the everyday multivitamin for women, they wanted to create something simple, something understandable, something backed by science. And they did. They created Essential for Women. Ritual is the obsessively researched multivitamin and takes the guesswork out of vitamins. I mean, they literally made the capsule clear so you can literally see what you are putting into your mouth. But this tiny little capsule contains nine high quality nutrients, vitamin D3, vitamin E, folate, vitamin B12, iron, magnesium, boron, omega-3, and vitamin K2. And if you're like me and you don't know why all those things things are good for you. The best part is that Ritual breaks down each ingredient on their website, shares where each ingredient is founded in, gives you the name of the supplier, the location it was manufactured, and its function and benefits. And they also show how their clinical studies have done in each. Not only is the pill transparent, but so is the company. And honestly, for me to back something, that's really important. Beyond all that, their multivitamins are vegan-friendly, non-GMO, gluten-free, allergen-free, and contain no added sugar. They also offer a men's multivitamin for him, a 50 plus for women post-menopause, prenatal, postnatal, kids, and teen vitamins, and they recently launched an essential protein range for your daily shakes and a daily cut support. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna need that. I've been eating Sour Patch Kids as I was DIYing all day. Now, I've been taking Ritual for the last month because you guys know I am not gonna get up here and talk about something that I'm not willing to put in my own mouth. And I have to say, the thing I love most about this multivitamin is the fact that it has this like minty flavor added to it. Every morning I come downstairs, I let the dog out and then I grab a glass of water. This is my ritual. And then I literally take this multivitamin and the minty flavor just like, it's just such a nice flavor burst in the morning as like the first thing that you taste. It's just such a nice touch, you know? Now, let's be clear, better health doesn't happen overnight. And right now, Ritual is offering you all 20% off your first month's worth of vitamins or protein by going to this link and using my code DANNY20 at checkout. Ladies and gents, just take charge of your health. All right, now that we have that out of our system, let's get back to the DIY. Woohoo! This was truly, truly best case scenario. Where I wanted to put this 
was right between two studs. There's literally nothing behind the wall, as you can see. <sighs> oh, this is such a DIY win. Yes, yes. So now all I need to do is basically just add a stud that's going to be the bottom of my shelf. We'll add a piece of drywall into the back just to make that nice and clean. Add our shelves in, then add some side pieces. Guys. This is so good because the best part is, is that both shelves can basically just go directly into the studs. This is so great. <sighs> I just feel vindicated. Oh my God, remember that song, Vindicated? <laughs> so at this point, I just need to go get some materials and tomorrow we can start on building this out. This is amazing. All right, clear high five. <laughs> I love you. Okay, so it is a brand new day. We have officially cut a hole in our wall so there's no going back. This morning I went to my hardware store. I got all the materials that I think I need. I've got a two by six piece because we need to like kind of build out a frame. So there's like a bunch of different ways that you can do this. You can either build a frame and build the whole thing inside the frame and then just set the frame in, or you can just build it right into the wall. I think what I'm gonna do is just build this thing right into the wall. So I'm just gonna go one piece at a time. So I need to build a bottom piece that's gonna sit here. I need to build a top piece. And then at that point, then we can start building building in the shelves that are gonna go across. Let's start cutting some wood and uh, let's see how today goes. It's gonna be fun. We need to put our hair back. It's hair back time. Now that we have kind of like our boxed structure, we need to start thinking about the inside. So that's the back, which is going to be a new drywall piece. We also need to build some corner brackets that are going to live in here so that we can create that arch and have some kind of support there within the arch. But the first thing we need to do is get the drywall on the back and then we can kind of start building on top of everything and around everything. So let's get started. progress has been made and I am excited about it. We got our sides, we have our box, we have these frames in with the arch supports. So at this point, what we need to do is figure out where our shelves are gonna go. I have some tape here and we're gonna figure out where the shelves are gonna go. I mean, we have shelves and they are level, and then we have these plugs and our holes here, and then once this is ready for sanding, I'll be able to sand away the plugs. Now, I did glue them in. I used this wood glue just to hold it in place, but in the meantime, now we get to do some of the final process, which is basically just building in drywall around the shelves on this bottom shelf and into our arch here. So the arch, let's talk about the arch. Basically what's going to happen is I'm going to cut a piece that's going to go from here. That's going to span all the way to here. And I'm just going to cut little small slits in it so that it'll allow me to curve it. If that makes sense. Should be hopefully a semi easy process, but wish me luck.
both shocked and thrilled to say that the drywall <laughs> cutting it technique totally worked. And I think once we get all the mudding done, it's just gonna be like, perfection. So at this point, the hard part's done and now we just basically have to like mud it all in. But to do that, I have some fiber tape and I have drywall compound and together we are going to use this tape to basically reinforce any of the seams. So I think I'm just going to finish out the rest of the day, do the first layer of mudding and at least get this tape layer on all of the seams because it is going to require many coats of drywall compound. So I just want to get like the first coat down today, let that completely dry. And then tomorrow we can do the second layer and start seeing this little tiny space transform. So let's do it. Good morning DIY friends. It's a good day. It's a good day because it's a two drink kind of day. A hot drink and a cold drink. Let me show you. My favorite morning combination is a cold drink, which normally results in a smoothie and a hot drink, which is my coffee. Sometimes the coffee's too hot, so I like the cold drink to offset the hot drink, but I also just like the cold drink because it makes my throat feel good. And then the hot drink, well, it's just because I need the caffeine. <laughs> You're really weird. This is all dry, which is great because now we can actually start putting on some layers that are going to make change. This is kind of like that point where you go, oh my God, is this gonna look good? But you need to trust the process because I swear, it just has to get very messy before it can look better. Oh my gosh, I can put this on the shelf now? I really, really wanted to get my hands on some flex trim, which is basically just like a flexible trim that allows you to do that arch in a beautiful and very like straight way but I couldn't get my hands on it in time for this project, so it is what it is. I'm not too, too concerned. I think, you know, this is a reminder to me, and I guess maybe this is me reminding you. When you're doing DIY projects and you're worried, is this, does this look like the professionals are doing it? You know what? Probably not. There's a reason why there are professionals out there that do this for a living, but that doesn't mean that yours is going to look bad. At the end of the day, people aren't going to walk up to whatever DIY project you do in your home and be like, whoa, those lines don't look good. They're gonna be like, wow, how did you do that? Whoa, you put a hole in your wall? I wouldn't even know where to start. No one's gonna be looking at those minute details in the way that you're looking at those minute details. Don't get caught up on the tiny things. Focus on the big picture and just keep working forward and getting to the finish line because I know it's gonna look great. I know that this is gonna look great. Essentially, I just have to mud over this, sand it a little bit, mud it probably one more time, let that dry, sand that, and then we can finally paint. So it's gonna be a long day. We got some work to do. Finally finished majority of the sanding. I am so close. I just need to do like one more very thin layer and I think um, I will be all ready to go. I just wanna share something though. Look how good this looks like underneath here. Like I'm thrilled with the way that those inserts worked out. They sand it down so nicely and I'm thrilled. The arch up here, it's a little deceiving. It doesn't look like it's smooth, but it is. I mean, it's not perfect, but I definitely think that it's much better than I expected. <laughs> without using the flex trim. So I'm pretty happy with this overall. This is like one of those projects where patience is the game and really taking the time to sand it out smooth and making sure it's all good because if I miss any steps or rush anything, then it's just gonna look bad at the end. So I'm gonna do one more thin layer up top and then we will sand that up and then we'll be ready to prime this whole bad boy. Very exciting.
Cause everything around you just keeps on turning I can see you searching for a escape Okay, honestly, this looks so good. I'm thrilled. Next steps, I don't wanna leave that oak wood raw. I do wanna protect it. So I'm actually gonna go over it with a Danish oil, just giving it a nice protective coat. It shouldn't take away that kind of lighter wood. My house is definitely filled with a lot of different types of wood. So I definitely wanna like kind of lean into that to complement all the different wood types. So let's go protect this. And then we have one final thing to do that's really just gonna take this from less boho-y and a little bit more my jam. So let's go. Okay, so I just finished and I think this looks amazing and I'm really happy with it. And I just really want to get some stuff on the shelf and style it so that we can reveal what this actually looks like. Are you ready to see the final shelf? All of my hard work on display. I did this all by myself. I feel so accomplished. So let me finally reveal what the shelf looks like in all its wonderful, beautiful glory. <laughs> Well, I have to say this was definitely a fun project. I have literally never cut a hole in my house and tried to like patch it up again. <laughs> like I'm really proud of myself. There are things that I would definitely improve on next time. I definitely would look into some flex trim or if I had made more cuts in the drywall, I think it would have maybe come out a little bit nicer. It's not perfect, but honestly, this house isn't perfect and I'm not perfect and I'm okay with that. Things that I love about this are honestly just like how the wood panels kind of like go past the actual wall itself so it feels like the wood pieces are kind of like inset into the wall these gallery rails look so beautiful and i think like it just kind of elevated it the decor and everything i still haven't figured out fully what i want to put on these shelves but i have a feeling this is gonna like change seasonally and i'm just i'm so excited but you guys should let me know what do you think of this shelf would you put a inset shelf into your home Home. What design decisions would you make? Let me know in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new here, subscribe. There are some big projects coming up this summer and you don't want to miss out. Also, big thanks to Ritual for sponsoring this episode. A reminder to use my link and code Danny20 at checkout to receive 20% off your first month worth of vitamins or protein. And of course, a big thank you to all of my patrons. Thank you for your support. If you want to check out my Patreon, I am linked it down in the description box below. Come and join the conversations on the Discord. We do lots of DIY help, DIY conversations, DIY brainstorming. And of course, my friends, as always, stay positive, stay creative, and keep on DIYing. See you next week. Bye-bye.